In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to enable physics on the weapon pickup that I've done in a previous tutorial. So make sure to watch that if you haven't got a weapon pickup. But currently, when you go up to this weapon, you can pick it up, as you can see here. But then if you go to drop it, it doesn't have physics on it. So there's a few extra steps to be able to add physics to it. So the first thing we need to do, we need to change the, uh, the uh, mesh. Uh, hierarchy currently so with this previously if you put this make sure the zero 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 spot is here because this isn't the root of the blueprint we could move this and it'd slot to wherever that is so the issue that would come up with uh, when we're doing uh, physics enabled uh, drops and stuff like that we need to make sure that the weapon mesh is the root so an issue that will come up if you've got, so for instance, the pivot by default on the cylinder is here. If we put this as the def default seam root, we can't move this anymore. So now when I do this pickup, it will slot into the very middle of this cylinder rather than at the end. So like a baseball bat or something like that. So if you're using this method, make sure in your 3D modeling software that you've got the pivots uh, made correctly. Um, but if that's okay, then this will work as intended. So we've got this as the root now. So if you drag the weapon mesh onto the default seam root, it will just override it and it'll make this the new uh, root. So there's a few other things we need to do as well. So currently this has no collision. What we need to do is change this. So set it to custom on this collision because when you enable physics, it needs to have collision enabled. But there's a, uh, one setting that we need to change. So pawn currently blocks. So this will be an issue where if you pick it up, your mesh character mesh will start to flick around. So if we just set this to overlap, what this will allow us to do is allow us to detect uh, if we're hitting an enemy. So uh, later on, if you put enemies in the game and you want to cause damage with this weapon, having this overlap will uh, be fine because a pawn is um, what the character you play as. That's what a pawn. That's that's what a pawn is, uh, and enemies and stuff will probably be classed as pawns as well. So. If we've got this set up, we currently need we need that set as world static as well on the object type. So once we've got that set up, we can start doing some code to enable physics and disable physics uh, once we've um, picked up the weapon. So first of all, if we drop the weapon, we want to be able to enable physics on that. So what you need to do is drag in weapon mesh and then do set collision type. So set collision object type. So this is going to then change it, so we can change this from static to something that can have physics on it. So a physics body seems like a sensible one, so if we put that in, it will then set the collision type to something that a collision body is. So once we've got that, we then need to en uh, set enable physics. So set simulate physics is the one. So set simulate physics, link that up, so make sure to drag off the weapon mesh and do set simulate physics and tick that. So we're going to check to see if that works. So we can pick this up and then we can drop it on the ground. So we won't be able to pick it back up because we need to dis disable physics. So copy paste this line of code, uh, move this across a little bit and then override A and drag that in. So make sure it looks something like this. It's a little bit messy, but we can clean that up. But what we need to do, set this back to world static and disable simulate physics. So we're going to set it world static. We're going to set the object type to world static. And then we're also going to disable simulate physics. So getting back to the original starting point. So then if we play this now, we can run around, drop it, and then pick it back up. And it slots to where we need it. So a cool thing that you can do with this, so you can do it where it just drops onto the ground. But you can also do this for a throwing uh, animation. So if you've got an animation that throws, you can set it so when it's at the correct part to throw it, you can then throw it. So I'll show you an example of that with this animation. So it's not going to look great um, because this isn't set as a running uh, as a throwing animation. But if I let go of it while it's at its peak of um, running, so let's so we can see it's throwing over the shoulder. But if we try and time this. Ooh, let's try and get this. 
There we are. So you can see it throws it. So if you've got a proper throwing animation, that'll look great. Um, but there's a few things to make sure. So make sure your pivot is correct. So make sure it's right, because this is obviously now in the middle of the uh, hand. We'd want it near to the end where the pivot is. Um, and then also, if you're wanting to do something like throwing, make sure to get a throwing animation in. And then um, you can start to throw your mesh. But this is now where you can drop it on the ground and then pick it back up.